This is the murder of Naomi Hersey. Naomi Hersey, born on the 15th of October 1981, grew up in a large Somalian Muslim family and was the fourth youngest of 11 siblings. Amina, Naomi's younger sister, said that they had a happy childhood with the house always hustling and bustling. Growing up, Naomi was close to Amina and would confide in her about most things, including how feminine she felt and her dressing up. However, Naomi hid a secret from her family, which was she felt like a woman and not like the gender she was born with. As time went on, Naomi's gender dysphoria started to unsettle her. She did not confide in anybody about her feelings and she found it hard to keep down a job. In 2017, Naomi moved away to Mill Hill, North London. Isolated from her family, depression settled in. Naomi then turned to drugs to escape her internal turmoil. While living away from her family, Naomi became resentful towards them and started contacting her family less. Naomi texted her sister Amina to never message her again. Unbeknownst to Amina, that would be the last time she would ever hear from Naomi. Jessie MacDonald was an only child and grew up in West Sussex and excelled at school and sport. Growing up, MacDonald was so talented at tennis that he started training to play the sport professionally. However, he sustained a terrible injury which meant that he had to quit his dream of becoming a professional tennis player and enrolled into the prestigious university called the London School of Economics to study history. This university is extremely difficult to get into. This therefore showed that MacDonald was very gifted academically. MacDonald then quit LSE in 2014 and lived in the annex of a hotel in Hounslow near Heathrow Airport, South London and turned to the dark web to make money selling drugs. MacDonald started to self-medicate and became addicted to prescription pills he bought on the internet to sell. At this point, 25-year-old MacDonald lived his life on the internet and met his girlfriend, 17-year-old Natalia, online. Their relationship with Natalia proved to be unfulfilling because on the 12th of March 2018, after spending the weekend with Natalia in Wiltshire, MacDonald reached his annex and within 40 minutes logged onto Fab Swingers, a free swingers and casual hookup website, and posted that he wanted edgy, risky sex. While searching the website, he came across 36-year-old Naomi's profile. After chatting to Naomi, MacDonald got into his car and drove for one hour to her flat in Mill Hill. MacDonald said that once he was in Naomi's flat, he was given orange juice laced with GHB, a date rape drug, and became intoxicated. He said that he had oral sex with Naomi and then blanked out. On the 13th of March, 2018, still at Naomi's flat, MacDonald claimed that Naomi gave him crystal meth and they both smoked together. MacDonald said while intoxicated, Naomi raped him but he stayed in her flat because he was fearful and under duress. The next day, McDonald's car was picked up by CCTV, showing him and Naomi driving to the shops to buy food, and they both appeared relaxed in the shop CCTV footage. On Thursday the 15th of March, McDonald said that Naomi was demanding money for the drugs that she supplied him and forced him to take her to his annex. He drove back to his place with Naomi and said that he would give her £80 and then drive her back home. Hotel CCTV captured them arriving to his annex. This would be the last time Naomi would be seen alive. The next day, according to MacDonald, he told Naomi to leave but she refused. So he went into the hotel kitchen and made two drinks. He put Xanax in Naomi's drink and then returned to the hotel room. Six hours later, he contacted Natalia and told her he needed her help. 
On Saturday the 17th of March at 1.30pm, Natalia is seen entering the annex via the hotel CCTV. She then goes out to buy cleaning products and returns to the annex. Moments later, McDonald and Natalia are seen fleeing the scene with their duffel bags. McDonald called his mum and told her he had been held captive for days by Naomi and he hurt her in self-defence. Concerned for her son, she called the police and they called him and did a wellness check over the phone. They questioned him about hurting Naomi and he told police that he was currently busy and would get back to them, but he never did. On Sunday, the hotel manager, who was also his landlord, called the police and said that McDonald had a fight with someone in self-defence and the body will be found in his tenant's room. Police went into the annex and found Naomi's body in the bathroom. Her headband, jacket and strands of Naomi's blood-stained wig on the floor and her blood scattered on the walls. While being interrogated by a team of investigators headed by Detective Inspector Tom Dari from Scotland Yard, McDonald still claimed that he attacked Naomi in self-defence. McDonald said Naomi tried to attack him by trying to throttle him after she found out he tried to drug her. He picked up a glass bottle, smashed it and stabbed her in the neck and they started tossing everywhere and ended up rolling into the bathroom where he stabbed her multiple times and died as a result of the attack. Pathologists found zero evidence to suggest that McDonald was acting in self-defence because there was no defence wounds on him or Naomi's body. D.I. Dari felt that this was suspicious because if there was a struggle, marks would have been on both their bodies. Pathologists reported Naomi suffered 11 stab wounds, seven of which were concentrated at the centre of her chest, all nine centimetres deep. Naomi also suffered 29 injuries to the neck and head. Because of the extent of the stab wounds, investigators concluded that McDonald did not act in self-defence, but out of rage and was charged with Naomi's murder. The police wanted to know Natalia's involvement in the case. The CCTV evidence of her going to the crime scene helping McDonald and her DNA on the marigold gloves that were found at the scene of the crime proved to be very damning. For attempting to clean up the crime scene, she was charged with perverting the course of justice. Both had to go to trial at the Old Bailey. In front of Naomi's friends and family, both defendants pled not guilty. Throughout the trial, MacDonald and Natalia hugged and kissed, and MacDonald even smirked a lot. He maintained in court that it was self-defence. His defence team teared Naomi apart. They said that she abducted MacDonald and was violent and aggressive towards him. However, his defence puzzled her close family and friends because she was never known to exhibit any sort of violent behaviour. It was revealed in court MacDonald's possible motive for murdering Naomi. The jury was shown a police body cam which showed him explaining his fear that Naomi gave him HIV, and this fear brought out extreme emotions in him. Naomi was HIV positive, but she was taking her medication, and therefore it was non-transmittable. On the 21st of October 2018, after a six-week trial, the jury found MacDonald guilty of murdering Naomi. Judge Mark Dennis QC sentenced him to a minimum of 20 years. Upon hearing this result, Jesse started punching the wall. Natalia was found guilty of perverting the course of justice and was given a suspended sentence of 150 hours of unpaid work. Though D.I. Dari stated that although Natalia did not inflict any harm on the victim, she was just as complicit in their attempted cover-up and trying to help MacDonald escape. Judge Mark Dennis said that MacDonald was a dominant character and she was entranced by him and that he was deeply flawed character and he was capable of misleading. Despite justice being served, Naomi's family continued to mourn their loss. 
Amina said, they will never see Naomi again, and that's what hurts the most. And it's really hard to come to terms with that. The way Naomi's death was reported by the media was shocking. News of her murder was not reported until three days after her death. Most newspapers opted to use her birth name rather than Naomi and misgendered or just referred to her as they or the 36 year old. This encapsulated the levels of discrimination that trans women, particularly trans women of colour, experienced on front pages of newspapers, social media and even on the streets. Stonewall, the UK's largest LGBT charity, reported that in 2018, two in five trans people had experienced a hate crime or incident because of their gender identity in the last 12 months. Most trans people, four in five, don't report hate crimes to the police. Some trans people don't feel supported by the police and some experience even further discrimination if they do report the crime. Stonewall stated that the murder of trans people often receives little coverage. If the victim is black or from another ethnic minority group, their deaths were also less likely to be reported by mainstream titles. According to the BBC, the Home Office have dedicated itself to tackle hate crime in all its forms, including abuse targeted at transgender people through the government's Hate Crime Action Plan. Deputy Chief Constable Julie Cook from the National Police Chiefs Council said, they are working closely with trans groups to increase awareness and understanding of their staff, as well as to build confidence and trust in the police by the trans community which shows positive action. However, this does not detract from the fact trans women are still being attacked and unreported in the media. Naomi's last tweet was about raising awareness about the high percentage of murder and violence towards trans women. It is unfortunate that Naomi would also become a victim of this epidemic. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This has been The Unreported.